Hello everybody and welcome back to the final installment of the Hunt Showdown tier list. So if you haven't seen it, I'll throw it up on screen now. We've made a tier list for the traits in the game, the three slots and the two slots. Um, and now we're at the one slot. I'm considering doing like a community feedback tier list where I'll just briefly go over my old videos and see what I'll change based off of what, you know, feedback I've gotten from you guys. And I've gotten... We got quite a bit, you know, you guys don't, you know, you don't agree with me and that's fine. You know, opinions are like assholes, right? Everyone has one. With that being said, let's hop into today's video. Now, personally, I think this will probably be the least controversial of the three videos I've already made, just because I think everyone kind of is on the same page with the one slots. And just so everyone knows, I am not doing dual wield for any of these pistols. That was covered in the two slot video, you know, accordingly. Uh, however, I am considering fanning as an option for every single one of these guns. Obviously, not the Bornheims or the Dolches. Oop, let's put that there. Uh, so yeah, fanning is being kept in mind for all of this. And so to begin, we have the base weapon, the Negant. Uh, God gun, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, what is the Negant? It's, it's not bad. You know, ever since the small buff ammo, uh, Jesus, <laughs> the small ammo buff, it's definitely gotten quite a bit better. And I think for a starting gun, it's not terrible. So like, is it meh? It's probably meh just by the virtue of the fact that like all of these are better at something, you know? Um, and even to fan, it's, it's fine, but it's not the best option. So I think it's meh and I think most people can agree with that. So next up we have the silenced version, which is kind of a weird gun because it fits more of this like tool uh, necessity rather than real combat. Because personally I love the silenced weapons in this game and I think just having the ability to move around the map and kind of take out PvE like a hundred times better than anyone else in the game who doesn't have a silencer is really almost invaluable. That being said, this is mainly kind of a PvP game. And so I don't think, obviously it doesn't excel. With fanning, it used to be a lot better before the fanning nerfs. I think it's probably, for now it's probably gonna go somewhere between here. I'm gonna keep it an average for now, but I might might bump it up to good. Or you know what, worst case, I'll keep it at good, but I'll keep it at the bottom end of good. Uh, next up we have the machete, this thing's trash. It costs the same as the knife, and the knife doesn't take up a weapon slot. Uh, the machete also doesn't one hit anything so well one hit zombies obviously but it doesn't one hit hunters so again might as well just use the knife it's one of these things that it does serve the function of killing zombies silently however not as silent as the silence negant because you still make the grunt noise when you're attacking and if you use silent killer well the grunts are still making the grunt noise when you're attacking so it's just really not good if you're gonna go for a melee weapon i would suggest the saber but we'll get to that in a minute so next up, we have the Caldwell Pax. This is actually a favorite of mine. I think it's a favorite of a lot of people's. It's, um, it doesn't serve the same function as the uppercut because of the fact that it doesn't hold the long ammo, it's not gonna be able to uh, give more ammo reserves to your long ammo rifles, like your you know, Sparks or more importantly, your Mosins and your Labels. but it's still very good. I think, I think this gun's actually very very good i don't know if it's god gun yet at the end of the video i'm going to as with all my videos i'm going to do a little rewind and really look at everything more in depth and just see if i uh, want to move anything up or down however i think the packs is i think this is a healthy spot for, i think this is good so the caldwell packs claw is literally the same thing except you get another little bonus so hey same thing except it's very good a little bit better um, and also fanning with these guns isn't the best out of all of them, but it is quite, yeah, it's quite nice. It's really not bad. So next up we have the Caldwell conversion pistol. I'm pretty sure this is the base and that's the uppercut. So the conversion pistol, what do I think of it? I think it's an excellent fanning gun. It has the most accurate hip fire uh, spread. And it's, it's good, it feels nice. Again, going back to the small ammo buff, I mention it in like every single video. It's really, it's nice. The skins are also gorgeous for it, if that, you know, you know puts you over the edge. I think it's really good. Um, 
is it in the very good? I think it's it's better than the Nagant Silence. I don't think it's particularly close. Uh, again, fanning. I think it's excellent with fanning. And yeah, because the again the hip fire kind of negates the fanning nerves. So I think it's I think it's pretty good. I think it's let's put it here. Put it at the bottom very good for now. Uh, next up, we have the chain pistol, and this thing is wildly inaccurate when you're just spamming with uh, with fanning. It kind of comes down to like the RNG of it all. Uh, the handling is worse on this than it is on the base one, which leads to wilder uh, shots. I definitely think if this tier list were based off of fun, this would be like the absolute top god gun. Uh, that being said, I think it's average. Um, it's just, it's, maybe, it's, nah, it's, no, it's good, it's fine, it's not terrible. So next up we have the uppercut. The uppercut is kind of a, it's a hot topic, because I know many people really love this gun, and many people really hate this gun. Obviously, close quarters, it's not your go-to, fanning is okay on it, at the best, it's okay. It's um, obviously it is the pocket sniper and it does bring extra ammo for those rifles as I mentioned when I was talking about the packs. I I have my ups and downs with it. I find the iron sights are really not great. But that's a, that's an uh, subjective thing. That's an opinion. You know, you guys care or disagree. That's fine. I don't like them. I personally like the iron sights that protrude a little bit more. My favorite iron sights in the entire game are the officer carbines. Uh, so this is like the opposite of the Officer Carbine. So I think just based off the fact that it gives you ammo reserves for your rifles, I think it's up there. But it's... Maybe it's here. Maybe it's right there. I think it's it's very good. Obviously you can pull off some pretty crazy shots from some pretty crazy ranges. It's your best quick swap weapon after a uh, long ammo bullet. Because you can, you know, just nail anyone from very long distance. And uh, yeah, it's it's good. It's very good. So next up we have the Bornheims. These things have been just absolutely gutted. These things have gotten the treatment. Um, so of course there was a time when these things were very nice. I think the many, many nerfs to like the damage range, the price uh, and the damage, because there's a very short period of time when the Bornheims actually two hitting. It was right after this uh, small ammo buff maybe stayed around for just a couple of days people realize it's a little bit too much but uh 200 for bornheim i'll buy an uppercut instead i also don't think it's the best close range pistol i just think it's i don't know i i think it fits an average i find the damage is a little having to go for three shots when every other pistol is two shots up close is kind of you know feels pretty bad and also, yeah, the range is terrible and the price is horrible. It's horrendous. The extended, like, it kind of helps because you get a few more bullets, you can spam a little bit more, so the three shot to kill doesn't matter as much. But it's still not good because then you lose the stripper clip also, and these are bullet grubber guns coming from a pistol, which feels pretty bad. Uh, so I think this is fair where it's at. I think this is fine. Uh, next up, we have the Officer Negants. These things, they're my favorite dual wield pistols right now at the moment. Close quarters with these things is disgusting. They shoot extremely fast, just like the uh, Bornheim, except they actually two tap. And uh, yeah, they're very good. They are limited in their use because they're really, really close range. Um, like that's just where you're gonna really excel with them. So similar to how you wouldn't use the uppercut up close, you don't want to use the Nagant past uh, past its small ammo range. So I think it fits here, and I think the brawlers go up ahead, right there. I think that's good. So now we have the previously mentioned saber. I think this is the best dedicated melee weapon in the game, unless you're counting the bomb lance, but I'm not. Uh, I think it's, the range on it is incredible, the poke is kind of hard to get used to at first, but once you do, it's, this thing excels in uh, close and even like, I don't want to say medium obviously, but if you're within a compound and you're able to jump from cover to cover, I think you can get the jump on many, many people with this thing. 
uh, I'll actually link right now, put a tag in the top right corner of a video that I did. It was a fan requested uh, loadout where I just ran with the saber and nothing else. It was interesting to say the least. I wouldn't run the saber with nothing else, but as a secondary weapon, it's good. It's pretty good. I think it's better than the chain pistol. I think it's better than the silenced. And I think it's better than the... Uh, I think it was here. I think it's very good. Next up, we have the meme cannon, the Lamat. The Lamat is definitely one of the more creative and I want to say cool weapons in the game, especially since it has one of the nicest skins in the game. That's just my opinion, though, uh, with the brass flower. The shotgun, however, definitely feels super inconsistent. Like we're talking crowning king at like 10 meters type inconsistent. Uh, yeah, it's not great, but it is an extra option that literally no other pistol here offers. Um, and I definitely think if you tag them with the small ammo from a medium distance, and then like as they rush you or as you rush them, swap the shotgun, that's a good combo. I like the Lamat quite a bit. I think quite a bit more than most people like the Lamat. I think it goes... I think here is a decent option, and just looking at the list, I think I'm actually going to put the conversion pistol just down here. Now, the only reason why I put the conversion above the Lamat would be because of the uh, fanning. The fanning on it's very good. I'm quite certain this is the conversion, this is the uppercut. As you can tell, it's practically the exact same model. Um, I'm counting this as the conversion. I think these are pretty interchangeable, and if you prefer the Lamat, then that's perfectly fine. Like, I understand why you would. Uh, I also find the iron sights on the Lamat just a little wonky for me. Not my favorite. But now we get to already our final weapon. I knew this was going to be a short video. Uh, we're already at the Dolch, aka the Red Nine, aka the Mauser. This thing is kind of iconic in this game in the same way that like the uppercut is iconic so where are the dolce's upsides let's keep it down here while i talk about it oh. <laughs> oh i can't put it back okay so let's just keep it here for now while we talk about it so with its 86 meters of effective headshot range and its really blazing rpm of 164 this thing kind of covers all your ranges that being said, obviously there are some downsides. You unlock it at rank 68, which is quite late. Uh, it costs $750, which is an ungodly amount. Just to, just to put it into consider, you could buy over almost four Bornheims for that price. You can buy the packs I don't even know how many times. This thing is extremely expensive, and of course, there's still two more knocks on it, being the special ammo that it consumes, being a complete pain in the ass, and the fact that its recoil is kind of wild, to say the least. I just think it's in this very weird position where it can become excellent if you use it a lot, but in order to use it a lot, you're spending all this money for it. So it's kind of strange it's a strange feeling gun to use i think it goes right behind the packs there's no god gun for the small to, uh, small ammo i think personally caldwell packs is the best pistol in the game fight me <laughs> uh you know down in the comments if you have uh, if you have another list obviously most people are gonna have different lists uh, i like to keep these a little bit more subjective uh this is just kind of how i feel about them but now we're going to do a little look back and we're going to see if I disagree with anything I just put. From first glance, I think it's all fair. I did forget to mention that also the Dolch does take a bullet grubber. Okay, so I'm going to keep the Saber in the very good territory, but I'm actually going to bump it down below. I think the uppercut and the two officers are just a touch better than... Ah! No, by itself, I think, yeah. No, it's right here. The saber goes right here. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, this seems to be my list. I'm happy with this. Let me know what you guys think down below. If you agree, let me know what you, uh, you know, if I gave it your favorite weapon some props and you agree with it. 
let me know. I like to hear some good news. And if you disagree, give me some feedback. I get feedback on all my episodes. I answer every single comment. And I really love to see what other people think about these weapons. And so it's interesting to see your guys' opinions. And uh, yeah, as always, like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Ciao. Thank you.